to call upon God. He asks us to do so, right? He asks us to come to him and ask. And then he says, and you will receive, right? But if we don't ask, what? Why should we receive? Now, there are times God gives it to us because he just sees we need it so bad that he desires to help us, right? God always desires to help us. See, the problem is we look at faith in the good things that happen in our lives, right? Well, there's a lot of times God will put something that's not so good in our path to get us to switch to get on a good path because our path is not so great. But we still have to have the faith that God has got us on the right path, right? So Bob was mentioning Bible class this morning. And in Bible class, we were teaching um, in Luke 18. And here's this lesson on these different subjects. And here's this little Zacchaeus. And what do we know about the song of Zacchaeus? This wee little man, right? Is he. And here's this little guy that runs up, jumps in the tree, and Jesus knows his name and says, Zacchaeus, come down from there. I need to go to your house. And Jesus goes to a sinner's house. Okay, anybody on the earth besides Jesus is a sinner. And they're all upset that he's going to a sinner's house. So I think that's kind of funny. You have the Pharisees that are committing sins, and they think they're not, and if Jesus goes to their house, there's another sinner's house. Okay. And here's Zacchaeus, and he has all of a sudden this faith and tells Jesus, I will go ahead and pay four times as much to those I have done wrong. And I will give away half of my possessions. How many of you are going to do that tomorrow? How many of you are going to go to your retirement place um, your retirement fund at First Bank or at Wells Fargo and go, hey, you know what? I'd like to give half that away. So here's a sinner who repents and comes to Jesus. The blind man that he's talking about. Here's a blind man that Jesus goes up to and says, your faith has cured your sight. Your faith. And he is healed. What else do we know about that blind man? Absolutely zero. The Bible tells us nothing else. Now, it might in another version of it being told, because sometimes some of the Mark or Luke give a little greater explanation than the other one, because of the way they saw it. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. How many of you like that you have wisdom? It's a little hard to live in this world if you don't. But there's plenty that don't and are having very many problems living in this world. They are going from place to place, from job to job, place to stay, to a different city, to a different state, to a different country, because they have no faith that there's a God that will help them through it. But let him ask in faith with what? No doubting. None at all. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Now, what do we have an example of that? We have the apostles in the boat, right? Boats rocking back and forth, and this is Bob's favorite story, and Jesus is asleep, right? Jesus is taking a nap during this. Boat's out of control. Hold it. Where's their faith? Because when they wake up Jesus, he says, you have little faith. You have little faith. If Jesus can sit there and sleep during it, I really doubt the boat's going down, right? But there's one thing interesting. 
Who's in that boat and what did some of them do? They were fishermen, weren't they? So they knew how bad the storm was. But no storm's too great for Jesus to calm or for God to hush and make the waves completely go away. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, that gave me a picture of someone who's crazy running around doing all kinds of things, right? But that's just because they don't, he doesn't trust in the Lord. So he will not get what he wants. Who can receive wisdom? It says, if any, if any of you lacks wisdom. It doesn't say you, 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 you. It says any, if any of you lack. God's willing to help out everybody. Even those who have totally said, you're not mine. As uh, Brian prepares Lucia for bed over here, <laughs> by wrapping her up, um, I love the book, and Clara picked this picture, and here's his heart, right? We have to have the heart to come to God, right? We have to have the heart to believe in God, right? And then we have to have the heart to follow God, right? If any of those are lacking, we're in trouble. Knowledge can be acquired, but wisdom is received. This is interesting. The wisdom of God is in the knowledge of his word. So you ever talk to the person that's never opened up the Bible? And their greatest wisdom is that the earth is two billion years old. And that they can tell how old trees are. And that everything on this earth can be explained by a big bang. It's amazing today more scientists are coming to God than ever before, it says. If you're starting to read the articles. And the reason is, is because they're seeing that it was taught to them by man to begin with. And man's not as smart as he thinks. He thinks he can explain all these things by taking the ring of a tree and how big it is and how many there is, and I'll tell you how old that tree is. David, David, look at me. If you forgot your birthday, and you were in a coma for 20 years, and you came out of your coma, would you know how old you were? Would you know how old you were? Would you? I don't think so. See, and neither would any of us. See, if we were in a coma, and the hospital didn't know who we were, and we came in as J. Doe, they would go like this approximately you are this because they would not be able to tell now you don't want them to do like a tree and cut you in half and see if they can find the rings right <laughs> the problem with knowledge is when we have knowledge from the Bible we can prove it and we can use it when we have knowledge from man we better be careful. Because the problem is it depends on their intent, on why they're giving it, and also their belief. If they have no belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, don't take knowledge from them. Stephen Hawkins had great knowledge. One of the smartest men that will have ever been on this earth to date. 
His mathematics were incredible. I told you one time, he took and he calculated the earth and calculated the earth backwards. And it says in that calculation that the earth had to exist in a split second, not even a second, or it would have blew itself apart. He had all the knowledge in the world, but he had no wisdom. He did not believe there was a God when he died, but he said there's a greater power out there. But he had no wisdom. How sad is that? He had one of the biggest brains, one of the most complex brains on this earth, and he didn't know who his Lord God is because he didn't have it in the right place. He didn't have knowledge of the word. How sad is that? Now, I will tell you, when he got on his knees in front of the Lord, or when he does, he's going to be shocked that he wasn't so smart. You must act in faith to apply wisdom. So what did it say before? But let him ask in faith with no doubting. When God asked Solomon what he wanted, did he doubt when he asked God for wisdom? And then not only did God give him wisdom, but he gave him riches beyond belief. God can see and tell what our heart is. If there's even one minute part that's going to doubt. As human bearing, uh, human bearings, Human bearings. As human beings, I'm taking, I'm taking this into the AI. You know, pretty soon we're going to be robots in here. As human beings, we tend to grab on to what makes sense, right? And we have to be careful because the devil standing there shooting out all this stuff and saying this makes sense. This makes sense, doesn't it, to you? And the problem is, a lot of times we'll take and run with that. And then we'll find out we've been duped. And that the way we were running was the wrong direction. And that's where faith comes in. That is when we stop everything and we repent. And we have to have the faith that God's going to forgive all of what we did and all of what we were. I like this. When knowledge is, what do you mean cut the blue wire? Huh? Yes. That's okay, because they get the gist of it. And the other one is, I trust you. Psalm 91, 2. I will say to the Lord, you are my place of safety and protection. You are my God, and I trust you. Just recently, I've had the honor of being at two of our members' places when they were getting ready to pass away. I missed Jim, but Brenda was there. But both Bill and Jim had great faith that God was taking them to heaven. Both of them left this earth with a beautiful smile. Both of them had the faith that those words in that book meant something 
to them and they tried to follow them. Now I will tell you, Bill was this trusting little engineer guy that probably didn't do much ever wrong. And Jim was this quick to anger guy that sometimes did quite a bit wrong, just like me, okay? And, but I tell you on that day, God didn't recognize anything that they had done wrong because they had accepted him as his. And they got a free pass to go to heaven. What a beautiful thing. See, we're lucky as Christians that when we come to God and ask for forgiveness, it is wiped out. No longer on our sheet. Caught in a storm, who will you trust, knowledge or wisdom? <clears throat> this is what I will tell you. If you trust our forecasters, you're probably going to end up in the middle of that ocean. Because they are wrong 50% of the time. But if you trust the wisdom of God's word through knowledge and know that he can calm the seas, that's a whole nother story. Because even that storm, he could say, hush and stop now. Or provide a way out. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Now sometimes we get carried away. Sometimes we think that we know that God's going to answer a particular way and we're going to wait for that particular way. So a guy's standing on his house as all these waves are beating it and getting ready to take it down the river. A helicopter pulls up and he says, don't worry about it, God's taking care of me. Boat pulls up, don't worry about it, God's taking care of me. All these people show up, nope, God's taking care of me. All of a sudden the house is about ready to cave in. He says, what are you doing, God? And he goes, geez, I sent you a helicopter, a boat, and all these people. <laughs> we got to know when it's God. And the only way you're going to do that is to get the wisdom of his word. It's the only way. There's no other way. It's impossible. You've got to know who he is by looking at his word. Don't confuse the two. But life is hard. God is good. He didn't promise us a rose garden, right? How many of the elderly in here go, wow, it's tough every day? It's tough, right? You better not be wimpy being old. You know, I'm starting to get there and I'm, I'm crawling out of bed sometimes and rolling. You know, tuck and roll, get out of here. My dad had all the wisdom to tell me, son, whatever you do to your body today, we'll get you later. So quit doing it. You know what I said? And now guess what? I'm paying the price. My knees hurt, my back hurts, my shoulders hurt. But you know what? I know that God's there and I will get up every morning until I can't. I have faith that he has a direction for me to go, and I need to go in that direction. And I know even with the sewer this, that we're backing up, that was a storm. And guess what? Even that we ask for the Lord to take care of. He says, ask in all things. See, the problem is, we want to go, I can take care of this one, Lord. And then guess what happens? It's all messed up and we got to go, hey, Lord, is there any way you can fix that and this now? 
Okay? Go to him in the beginning. When you go to do something dangerous, go in the beginning and ask for safety. The church, we as a board, we go out there and we cut down our trees ourselves. We had a 40-foot evergreen tree in this corner that we decided to cut down. But we use wisdom. Get a big enough rope, long enough, hook it to a truck, pull it, falls in the right place, right? Makes one heck of a mess, but it falls in the right place. But we still prayed beforehand. Because if not, guess what? Rope might get tangled up. Someone might go to correct it, and guess what? So you pray beforehand. We still praying at the food bank, Claire? Pray at the food bank before they get started. They're handling 70,000 pounds of food in this church on a given Tuesday. And now we have Pac-Man here. Do you guys even know that? You have Pac-Man. Mary's going, what does he mean by Pac-Man? You have this little forklift that's colored yellow chasing people and wanting to eat them. So we have to pray for safety, right? That those people are safe in that gym and around this building. Now I will tell you, if you get ran over, more than likely Jim's driving it. So you know where he lives, so at least you can go after him. <laughs> Listen, guys. If you have faith, he says, as little as a mustard seed, you can move mountains, right? Let's leave the mountains where they're at. But let's move people's lives in the right direction by giving them some of that faith and sharing it with them. And telling them that we can heal those things in God's name. But we have to have all the faith that God's going to do it. And don't get messed up when he doesn't do it exactly the way you think. Because we don't know the best way. But he does. So be prepared this week to go out and to share your faith with people. Because it's the one thing that you can share and not lose, but let it keep giving. So a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. What do we have up there? We have the devil on one side, you know, going in the air, and the angel on the other, right? How many of you think this really does happen? Now the devil's over there going, hey, don't worry about it. The angel's going, are you nuts? Look at his word, what it says. See, the angel gives you something productive. He tells you, look at the word. The devil just tells you, don't worry about it. For let not the man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Why is he unstable in all his ways? See, if he doesn't believe what the Lord is giving him, then he's unstable. Because then he's believing in man's way. We have plenty of people believing in man's way. So this is the last slide, and it says, trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. And do not reply, or do not rely on what? Your own? There we go. Your own insight. Your own insight's going to get you in trouble. In all your ways, acknowledge who? Him, the Lord. And he will What? Make straight your path. What does it take to get into heaven? He wants us to be on a straight and narrow path, right? So that we're not to the left, not to the right. So that we're walking with him on this straight and narrow path. I love this picture because it has the one thing that we need all of our lives. His living word. So that we can do it. Guys, don't miss a day 
I'll be honest with you, I've been so busy and all this stuff is just coming down like a river on top of my head and I miss that I'm not in the Word as much as I should be. And I'm making excuses upon everything else so I can try to get some sleep at night. Maybe I ought to just read at night because I'm not getting any sleep anyways. Maybe that's what he's telling me. I need to be up reading instead. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely upon your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will straight your paths. Man. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. He says it exactly the way it is. And this is out of Proverbs, where Proverbs tells us a lot about what you better not be doing and what you better be doing, right? You ever want to know if you're a sinner? Go to Proverbs. Start reading. And you'll find out, oops, uh uh-oh, uh-oh, uh that's not good. A lot of these pages, pages apply to me. You know, I remember a time when Pat was here, Pat Patterson, and he was preaching, and his son-in-law got up here, and he was a funny guy. Remember him, Claire? I know you know. The one that made you laugh during the, his, um, his uh, um, service that we had for him. And uh, this guy got up. Well, it wasn't the son-in-law. It was the brother-in-law. And he got up here, and he said, Oh, man, I can't believe it. Every time I came to Pat's service, he knew what I was doing wrong that week. Because he was preaching on it. All we got to do is preach and we'll find out our, our problems. When you have faith, you can't have fear. You can't. Because you will not ask then. Throw away the fear and have the faith that God will be there instead. And he will catch you. And you will always be his. Let's pray. Dear Holy Lord, God, we thank you so much for all that you do and all that you are. Oh, Lord. So much going on in this world. So much going on. Let us keep our nose in your word, Lord. Let us keep our mind on you, Lord. Let us keep our faith in you, Lord. Let us repent for the things that we do wrong, Lord. Lord, it says that you so loved the world. You so loved us. You so desire to be with us. But it also says that you don't need us. Not one bit. But you desire to have us. Let us then desire to have the faith that you, our Father, can do all these things for us and for this world. We do this all in your name and all the people say, Amen.